Good morning and welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. It is Wednesday, March 10th, and we are considering our deliberation on H87, an act relating to establishing a classification system for criminal offenses. Uh, we do have a draft with highlights. It's draft 2.1 to show the changes that were discussed yesterday. Um, and I am hoping that we can bring this to a vote this morning as planned. Uh, so in the absence of counsel, I'm going to ask Representative Martin Lalonde to, uh, to walk us through the, uh, the changes. Martin, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the changes are relatively straightforward from yesterday, from the conversation yesterday. Uh, they can be found, uh, found on page three of, of the bill uh, either with the highlighting or, or the clean bill, either way, uh, taking a look at that. It is, uh, sub, it is a new subsection, oops, it's subsection C, and it comports with what the discussion was uh, yesterday regarding what the court should consider in determining whether to uh, include a fine as part of a penalty for a criminal offense. Uh, so it reads that when determining the amount of a fine and the method of payment, the court shall consider, and this really is the new language is the next phrase, based on all financial information available to the court, including information provided by the offender, uh, one, the defendant's present and future financial ability to pay the fines, and two, the nature of the financial burden that payment of the fine will impose on the defendant and any dependents of the defendant. So that, that would be the language uh, just to ensure that the court is, <clears throat> is looking at essentially the ability to pay. And the language that was added really is to uh, set forth what basis the court should be making this determination on, uh, that it's the financial information available to the court, including that provided by the defendant. Uh, so that so it's not just being made up out of out of the air. There's got to be information before the court on which the court would make that determination. And other than that, the other changes, uh, you know, uh, Eric went through yesterday. Great, thank you. Uh, Th these, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say so, and and Martin, some of this language is I think Selena has suggested, right? Is that true? Some of this language to track the what is it, the restitution? Yeah, the idea is to is to track closely with restitution. Uh, that's correct. Okay. And that language that is you know the based on all financial information available to the court, including the information provided by the offender, uh, that comes right from the restitution uh, law. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tom. Yeah, um, on lines uh, 16 through 20 with the uh, with the fines, it, is this is this new since yesterday? Those numbers. Is this the on page two? On page two, I'm sorry. Uh, no, this is this is what we went over yesterday. Uh, the, yeah, I explained that we were that uh, I had met, uh, Kate Donnelly and I had met with Eric uh, the day before break and kind of looked at the various uh, crimes that we have on the books uh, and tried to make the, the fines in these classifications closer to what we already have in the books. Now, one thing I mentioned yesterday is that there are, there are a very limited number of crimes that are not categorized in this bill at this point that have much higher uh, fines. Most everything else is in the no more than $50,000 range, but uh, certain drug trafficking uh, crimes, uh, human trafficking, as well as another one have $500,000 million fines. When we get to those crimes down the road, as we continue to categorize these, uh, we can make a clear exception in those instances that the fine can be higher and it would make some sense. And we heard yesterday as well from, I believe it was David Shear, uh, talking about DUI crimes are one where one might want to have possibly higher crimes or, or fines 
because uh, of the ability to pay, it crosses the socioeconomic categories really. But those we're not dealing with. Those, those we get to deal with right. on the road and we can make those exceptions on those few crimes that really call for a high fine. But, but the property crimes we're dealing with here, uh, there was a concern on the, uh, as far as uh, that these fines actually are increasing for some of them, and that is true. Uh, but, but I think we uh, largely have taken care of that issue by ensuring that the court take into account uh, the ability to pay when they are levying a fine, if they levy a fine, which from what we also understand from testimony, they don't do very often. So courts don't do very often. Right. So with the discussion yesterday about the, the amounts and some are going up, so none of the amounts changed since yesterday? Correct. Okay, great. Um, so... I guess if anybody else has got any questions, I'll wait. I'll hold on uh, what I want to say. Well, <laughs> I'm not seeing any hands. So I guess I'm up. <laughs> so yeah. just with, I'm not going to get into any big detail. Uh, just what was some of the things that happened yesterday, um, you know, in a way some things played out, uh, um, I, I wasn't happy. And, and again, I'm not gonna go into any detail. I, I don't think it's necessary. And I, and I was seriously uh, um, up until, you know, it was one of those times where you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you think about things. And I was thinking about this bill and I was seriously thinking about voting against it. Um, and what it came down to and I realize, you know, the changes that we made, you know, here and, you know, in the last, you know, in the last hour, 11th hour are, you know, monumental changes. Um, but there was just, there was just something that was, I, I guess, a term could be sticking in my craw. <laughs> and, and what it came down to is, I want this vote to come out 11-0. And, and, and the reason I wanted to come out 11 0 is, uh, is for Maxine. And, and the reason I want it, I want to do it for Maxine is because we've been working on this thing for what, two or three years? <laughs> uh, a long time. Probably the, the most time we spent on any bill uh, that I've ever spent on any bill, I think. And, and, and I would hate to see uh, her leadership. Uh, uh, um, to say anything or just have a, an idea of, you know, what kind of a vote is this on something you've been working on for, for two years. Um, uh, and um, because it, it is important work, it is good work. It, and it, I think it needs to just move forward with as, uh, as little resistance as possible. But um, I don't know if I articulated very well what I wanted to say, but uh, I will be a yes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Bob. Uh, just a quick question. It, it may not be germane to this bill here, uh, probably for Martin. I noticed we, we the, in the, uh, the hate motivated crime bill today, there was a, there was a fine and a, and a sentence behind that. Uh, I'm just curious as to when we reorganize all this, such as we're doing now, how does that work with bills that we're looking at voting on and potentially passing here, Martin? No, you make, you make a very good point. And, and uh, we, we have tried, uh, I think in the last couple of years as we've had this bill moving along, when, when we've, and we haven't dealt with a lot of new crimes uh, in the last couple of years, but we've tried to uh, put whatever the penalties are uh, to comport with what this categorization is for when we actually get to the point of categorizing those particular class of cr crimes, it'll be much more straightforward to do so. So we, we have been paying attention to that. The hate crime is a little bit different animal. It's an enhancement, which, which we'll see how the Sentencing Commission uh, 
tries to have us fit that into this cat into this whole uh, scheme. It's it's one of the things that they are continuing to work on. Uh, but I will say you know, that we do have recommendations from the Sentencing Commission for the different categories of crime, the sex crimes, the crimes against people or violent crimes. Uh, and they're working on a few more. But as we're looking at stuff, again, we're, I think we've been trying to make sure that whatever we put in as a penalty or the new penalty, you know, because the, the hate crime is that's, that's already on the books, but any new penalty, we've tried to be consistent with where we know that this is heading, where the, where the train is going. So I don't know if that, is that, does that answer? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Bob. That's a really, really good and important point. Uh, Tom, your hand is up. <laughs> I think it's always up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Nope. Okay. So. I'm not hearing any uh, anything in terms of what folks need in order to vote. So just pause for a minute if I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Great, well, thank you. So let's see, so we will be voting on draft 2.1, right? H87. And Ken, when you are ready, please. Over. Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. So we didn't have, we <laughs> ahead of myself. I need a motion uh, and a second. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and take the motion since nobody else is. I'll that, second. That we, yeah, prove it. Okay, great. First and second. Okay. Any um, any discussion? Okay. So now the clerk shall commence to call the roll. Thank you. Colburn. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Uh, me. I can get back to me, right? Uh, not really. I think if you're in your seat, you need to, I mean, if we were in the committee room and you, a member is in their seat, they need to vote is my understanding. Sure, I'll go through, go along with it just to get rid of it. Lalon? Yes. Luffler? Yes. Norris? Yes. Not? Yes. Rachelson? Yes. Christy? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. And can just to respond to your to your um, to your vote, the, the bill will move. It has enough votes to move. So um, I well they all do. I know that. Okay, but I'm just responding. I'm not trying to be. I'm. I'm not trying to be flip with you, but it's best I don't say anything. Okay. Well, um, I'm just responding to your voting yes to get to get rid of it. That. <laughs> um, that no, that... my response is all bills are going to move through. We're in a massive crunch to throw everything through, whether anybody wants to agree with it or not. I said I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. We're rushing everything through, and I have a real problem with this. If this is this goes against my basic principle of proper legislation, 
And it's and that's not a slight on you, uh, Madam Chair, at all. It's just I don't agree with this uh, way of doing of 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 uh, of uh, being a lawmaker in this state. It goes against what I stand for, and I'm not and I'm not very happy with myself right now. So okay. Thank well, you. I am giving you the opportunity to change your vote because I want you to vote <laughs> not to get rid of something. But, well, but so. as we know, it won't matter. So I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and I believe, uh, Martin, you're going to report it, correct? Uh, happy to. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we are ahead of schedule and it's a beautiful day. I wouldn't mind taking a, just a few minutes to get folks thoughts about uh, the testimony this morning. And um, again, just informal discussion regarding the, um, the study and the, uh, the hate motivated crimes. If folks wanna weigh in now, otherwise we certainly have time later in the week, we'll, we'll be discussing it, but Selena. Um, of course, there's in F-35 just started flying overhead, but um, hopefully I'll, you'll be able to hear me. Uh, I think it stopped. Um, I just met with really briefly with James Pepper and Robin Joy about the um, provision, I think it was B1A in section one, but about the NIBRS incident reporting. And we came up with some proposed language that um, would, at, would try to get at the whole universe of offenses that were coded with an offender bias motivation. So both the number of incidents and the types of offenses by category. And that Robin Joy said um, that they had really federal, so Robin Joy from the Crime Research Group said that they had federal requirements around protecting victim identity. And because some of these subcategories are so small, um, that that demographic, some of that demographic information or even linking like um, the category of offender bias with the crime itself might really compromise victim confidentiality, which is like a federal requirement around um, their funding and their work. And so uh, we have uh, are working with some like mirroring some language going to propose an amendment just to that section that mirrors some language in I think the next draft that we'll see of H183 that similarly gets at you know that we are asking for this report but that it needs to um, to the fullest extent possible protect victim confidentiality and I don't know I, then I would just so that's just a report back to the committee um, and hopefully I'll, I'll send that language along to Bryn and you all can see it in the next draft. And um, I would say some of the bigger questions that came up around how to really get at that demographic data and how to get at the demographic data of all of the players in the system, not just, not even just victims and offenders, but prosecutors and police officers who are helping to bring charges and so on. It just, it seems to me like there's so much to figure out there that um, it perhaps best belongs in the, I'm hopeful that we are gonna see movement this biennium on the Bureau of Racial Statistics bill and concept and um, it seems like that might be the place to tackle some of those bigger questions because they're really systemic, you know, and needs probably some resources behind them in terms of solutions. Right, thank you. And any discussion about taking two out or any, or, or in terms of the concerns about that um, right now it is just regarding the defendants and whether or not that's 
weighted unfairly as the Defender General's Office spoke about? Um, we didn't talk about that. I'm just pulling, I'm just pulling the draft, the existing draft language back up. Um, right about to, that it's just about the defendants. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't talk about that. Okay. We were, we were really focused on the Nivers question, um, but yeah. we probably should have talked about that. Okay. Yeah, uh, I did uh, put that question out to to Pepper. I, I think it's something worth worth considering. Um, yeah, I can. I'm going to share this language with um, Robin and Pepper right now, and so I can try to circle back around on that question too. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for thank you for working on that, uh, Bob. Yeah, just a quick question. Bryn had brought up the fact about uh, having a prosecutor speak on uh, the addition of or the change that uh, Falco had recommended as far as intentionally. W was that question actually answered? Did I miss it? Or could someone elaborate on that a little bit? Or? Uh, David Shear spoke about it briefly. He also, he really didn't have much time to prepare his remarks, but um, but he did speak in, in opposition to to that proposed language. Okay. Um, and also, um, Bryn also spoke about that she didn't think it was was necessary. Uh, I, I I think we would need a fair amount of testimony on that section, or more testimony. Uh, that's what I'm, what's going through my mind, but I'm going to hear from others. No. Okay, not seeing any hands. Okay, all right, well, let's keep uh, thinking about it and then um, Selena let us know what we'll get back. And I think that is it for this. So um, Selena and Barbara, you're ready for this afternoon and have what you have what you need and okay. So yeah, the, yeah. The all right, well, we're- Sponsors were super helpful to me and Bran as well in preparing. Okay, great. And uh, so I think um, Eric and Bryn can be, or I'm sorry, Michelle and Bryn um, can be on Zoom uh, because of um, that way they don't, they avoid um, the lag that, that YouTube has. Um, and then, but certainly you can, if you have questions, you can email them and, uh, you know, committee members, we could text each each other if you need any help and certainly always can take a break if you if you need to for a quick and question or something. I feel like every time I've seen it happen, it's happened a little bit differently. So do you have any sense of what, if we did need to um, take a recess to consult with legislative council? Like sometimes I've seen that move into some kind of weird breakout room and sometimes it's like, I just would, you know, go off to the side and do it as a reporter of the bill. Do you have any sense of how, I can ask the clerk too, if that would be helpful, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I to work at this point. I don't know, but I would, I would think you should be able to, to meet with counsel. It's, it's not like there's a um, point of order where there's a breakout room where we, where we go up to the podium or something like that. I think this is, um, Madam yeah. Chair? Yes. Uh, in the rules, they did allow uh, for us as committees uh, to confab, uh, especially uh, on fl uh, floor amendments uh, and questions. Uh, so the clerk can constitute a breakout room uh, for us for that purpose. Okay, thank you. And how about for just one member and um, an attorney. I mean, I, well, well, they they would have that same that same option because the speaker did uh, offer uh, for that consultation capability, um, you, you know, on other bills, you know, as well. Yeah, I'll email Betsy Ann and Brent just in my case to see what the protocol would be, and then I'll share their response right. with right. Um, 
the whole community should right. but, see but, it that way. Barbara, you'll have a sense too. You know, and, and yeah. because they've they've done it, and it's just a question of request. But you know, um, it's just that we haven't had to do it that often. You know, yet. Right. But I have a feeling this week we will see a lot more of it than we have. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you.